Welcome back guys. This is Dito Bro coming back at you. And uh, for all of you guys that are not familiar with my YouTube channel, we are all of our architecture. Again, my name is Dito Bro. I'm a licensed architect here in Pensacola, Florida. And I wanted to kind of talk to you guys a little bit about passive design. forget to subscribe and hit the like button and the notification all right what is passive design what does it mean for me no well, I'll tell you just a little bit about it it has to do with the climate yes we have we all live in different climate zones depending where you're located you may be in a hot arid desert or a subtropical environment we have several classifications here marine hot dry hot humid mixed dry mixed humid cold very cold or sub arctic depending on where you're located you may be in a zone now depending you know we're all composed of different cultures but we all have to live in an environment that's comfortable i'm going to break it down for you guys here in the states we have different styles of design for buildings depending on where you're located uh, classifying it in zones and various areas depending on if it's really humid or really dry we can design houses to keep you nice and cozy or extremely uncomfortable you got climates that are, require mass versus environments that require lots of air movement through the through the space to keep you cool and dry well as best as possible but I'll touch on a couple of these things. I know some of you guys that live out there in the islands will probably relate to having houses that do allow a lot of air movement versus somebody that lives in cold climates. They want a very thick, massive house that can keep the warmth inside and the cold outside. We look. We can look at kind of some of these houses and, and begin to break them down as you can see, they have a lot of mass. Not a lot of windows, but a lot of mass without a lot of penetrations. Here's the same case. The On the opposite end of this, we have uh, houses out in the desert. Uh, I don't know if you guys are aware of what a, an adobe house is, but it's a house made of uh, this clay, this product that's out there found, and they, they pack it. And so they ram the, 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 the walls down so they can make them really thick and dense. We as architects use these as an architectural accent feature. Now, it is important to place your building in the right orientation relative to the sun so you can maximize uh, sunlight when you need it and reduce sunlight when you don't need it. Also, another thing that's important is placing the building so that you get you can maximize airflow in into the house to kind of keep those uh, those days that is really warm. You wanna you wanna maximize your air movement through the through windows and openings. You can control them in different ways with louvers. Uh, you can do high windows, low windows. Air airflow is important because just like evaporation, our skin has to remove that moist damp sweat off our bodies it's the same way that we need a house to ventilate having good cross ventilation it is vital for any houses uh, in some situations such as in tropical environments we want to elevate the building we want that air movement constantly going through it there are various strategies you can take advantage of shading devices orientation and choices of materials Hope you guys like this show i mean this video it's a short one but it does get the point across it are these are design strategies for passive cooling and passive design see you guys next time